Hey, so um, I've got this thin client here. This is an HP. It's a T5730. And uh, if you don't know what a thin client is, uh, it's kind of like a computer, but there's no moving parts. It's uh, fanless. There's no hard drive. It uses a flash module. Um, this particular module is one gig of flash and has one gig of RAM. It uses a standard uh, laptop style SIM card in there. But it's almost everything that a computer is. Um, it runs XP embedded, which uh, for some people you'd have to look closely to even notice the difference. But it's meant for banks and uh, businesses and places where they're running one program and don't need the expense of a full blown computer. Uh, you've got energy savings here. Uh, this is very uh, low power consumption, uh, low heat, no noise at all. Um, so it's 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 a really nice solution for some uh, business uses, but for the most part, it's uh, it's a full blown computer. You know, uh, you've got your headset here, or you've got front USB ports. Uh, you look at the back. Um, this is real nice. You've got VGA and DVI, a, a hardware serial port, which is crucial. A couple of PS2 ports for mouse and keyboard. Four more USB ports. There's plenty of USB on here. And then you've got uh, uh, Ethernet jack there, um, and uh, that's your audio output for speakers. And of course, there's your power input. That's a coaxial jack, and that's what I'm interested in. Um, I'm going to use this as the uh, the computer to stream the audio from my local uh, scanner. So uh, my scanner feed is going to be run off of this. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire in this power cord. My scanner is a mobile. It's a BCT15. It's a unit and scanner. Um, it'll work out real nice. It's a it's a basic mobile scanner. But uh, my county here they don't do anything crazy. There's no trunking. There's no digital. There's um, there's nothing. So a nice basic scanner will work just fine. I chose that mobile because it has a, a tape output on there, and uh, that's what may be plugging into this uh, for some better quality sound. Um, but the scanner runs off 12 volts. This this jack it takes a 12 volt adapter. I've looked at the specs here on the uh, uh, on here, and it says right there 12 volts for uh, four amps or so potentially. And the scanner has very little draw really. So uh, I'm going to piggyback this inside. I'm going to open this up and solder this in so that one power supply will power both my uh, computer and the scanner. Okay, so uh, to get started, I'm going to open this up. And uh, I've just stood this up here. There's a, uh, there's a screw right here that you want to take out. That's your Kensington lock uh, hole. And I think uh, they make a model of this where uh, built-in uh, a wireless is possible. So this is like an antenna jack there. But you take this screw out, and then this top, top panel just, um, it just slides. There we go. It slides towards the rear, so you can just push on the front. And it just lifts right up off. So you can set that aside. And then this is a feature that I like with this model. There's actually two more USB ports. So we've got eight USB total in this thing, um, which is crazy. I think this is why people love them for like the magic jacks and so forth. There's so much uh, possibility here. But this hidden area is where you could put a, you could put a small uh, Wi-Fi USB adapter in here. Um, I don't know if a magic jack would fit in there or not. Uh, I don't think so, but... Um, but you can hide something USB up in here, so even you know, even a flash drive for some storage, and that just makes it compact. Uh, if it's sitting somewhere where people might fiddle with it, you know, th th this locks it out of their their view, so they don't even know it's there. But uh, that's another cool feature of this one. So um, once you get that top off, there's one more screw right here, and that holds this side piece on, so you can see that just slide again to the rear. And then this just comes right off. And this is the plastic trim on the outside here. So what you end up with is this. Now, um, one thing I'll point out: there's a uh, an expansion uh, unit for this that'll it'll screw onto this side. And that's what this port is. It, it kind of looks like a uh, PCI 
uh, Express uh, video slot. You probably really can't see down in there, but um, it breaks out into a whole unit that comes comes onto the side here. Gives you a, a PCI slot that you can mount a card, like an external card of some kind, like a serial card, FireWire, um, TV tuner, maybe. Um, you know, whatever you want to fit in there. So you have PCI, and then it gives you uh, um, an extra serial port as well. So that's uh, two hardware serial ports. And there may be a couple other things, but that's what goes on this side. So it's meant to be able to be uh, serviced real easy and uh, add that onto it. So there's uh, four more screws in here. Yeah, so two down here, one right there, and one right there. And then this just kind of lifts. This is the front side here. So we're going to pop that up. And then it just lifts out. So this is like, this is really easy. Not a lot of effort to get this open at all. And you can see the flash module, uh, the RAM. There's a spot where they could have put another socket on there. You could have put maybe two gigs in there. Uh, there's your passive heat sink for the processor. Uh, it's probably your north bridge, south bridge under there. Yeah, so that's that's inside. But where I'm uh, really looking at here is this corner. I'm trying to get some focus here. Yeah. So yeah, here's the uh, power jack, and right uh, right on the end here, this little circle. That's going to be the positive tip on the inside of that jack so that's, that's where my red wire is going to go and then right here on the side there's a contact here uh, that's the side of that okay so um, look on the inside there's my jack here's the uh, outside where I didn't remove down through these holes here it's part of the um, it's part of the ventilation for the heat sink, but it goes straight through the other side really with no uh, obstacles or uh, anything too sharp that could damage the wire, but it's just a hair too small to uh, to try to wedge those w wires through there. So uh, you can see here, I hold it up to the light, there's a uh, There's the inside corner, where's the power jack, and basically right behind that copper, that's what I'm looking to, uh, that's what I'm looking to come through at. I don't know why it's not focusing, but there we go. So, so what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to take and open up one of those holes just a little bit. And that should let me fit those wires through there. So I want to make sure that in the long run, you know, moving this around or anything, I'm not going to chafe those wires and uh, cause a short of some kind. So, um, so yeah, I'm just going to open that up. That's good. So uh, you can see that slightly larger hole there. That's just what I'm looking for. So now this uh, this wire should go through there real easily.
Okay, uh, I got the wire pulled through there. Um, used a little bit of duster to make sure there's any, uh, make sure there wasn't any chips or anything in there. Uh, I could make some contact. So um, what I'm gonna do now is uh, heat up the soldering iron and get on that jack. All right, the iron's hot. Let's give it a shot here. Nice little blob there. I'm just pre-tinning these. This one's a little tougher because there's more metal mass there to get hot. There we go. All right, so those are tinned. I'm just gonna take my wires here, trim them down a little bit. Form this negative lead. And there's the negative. Positive. A little pull test. Feels good. Alright. So those are attached. Now before you do this, you can always verify inside here with the multimeter. You know, once you have this open, take the power adapter, plug it in, and uh, you know, touch both of those contacts with your meter, verify the polarity, but uh, I've already done that step, so I know that that center is positive. But that's just one way you can verify it to be sure. Okay, so the last step here is I've attached this um, wire tie uh, around this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cinch that up, give myself a little bit of a loop here, and cinch that tight on the wire right like that so I didn't attach it to anything but the wire but what I'm gonna do I'll take my side cuts here again trim that excess off and now as I pull the wire through what's gonna happen here it's going to stop. Try to get a good angle so you can see it. Yeah, that's tough. There we go. But that, that wire tie is going to stop it from pulling through the case and leave this little bit of a loop here um, on the inside. And I'll just form that kind of out of the way. That'll make sure to keep the tension off of that solder joint. So if, uh, if we are moving this around, we don't accidentally pull that loose and uh, cause any damage, or just have to open it up and, and re redo it. So, so that's it. I just got to do is uh, put this back together and uh, give it a test. And there it is. It's all uh, plugged in. There's a power adapter going in the back. Got our uh, wire coming out the side, going into the scanner. We're all clear up here. And scanner's going, so uh, looks like a success. 
might leave just to burn in make sure uh, that power adapter doesn't get too hot it shouldn't that the uh, computer is practically idling there doing nothing so uh, this ought to work out well it's got to hook up the serial cable and the uh, audio cable and finish work on the software um, I'm playing with radio feed um, might have, might switch to scanner cast if I don't like it I haven't used it yet so um, I can always go, fall back on scanner cast but yeah it's uh, it's ready to go so uh, we're all set thanks for watching